Hi there, this is Tommaso Zillia of songwritinglessonsonline.com and today we are going to talk about what are the most important skills for a songwriter to develop. So, I often get uh, the same question in my email inbox and the question goes on like that. Tommaso, I am a beginner songwriter and I want to know what should I work on right now in order to write my songs. You see that's a very simple question and it's a great question. What do you need to work on? I like those kind of questions because they already show that you guys are thinking forward, that you have to learn and that you have to prepare yourself in order to be able to write. Writing a song comes, of course, from inspiration, but inspiration is nothing unless you can control this inspiration and put it down on paper or on an instrument or in your computer so that it actually becomes a song. And that's where most people are struggling at the beginning. At the beginning, you have all those interesting ideas for a song. Maybe you have a little sentence or uh, like a, a sentence for the lyrics of the song, or a little melody, or an, an idea on your guitar, or on your piano, or on any other instruments you can play, but it's hard to work with it. So, that's where those skills come into play. You have to prepare yourself by learning those skills, so that when the inspirational moment comes, when, when the muse knocks at your door with, this, with the idea, you are ready to receive the song. From this comes that the most important skill that a beginning songwriter can develop is training your ear. Now, lots of songwriters hate ear training, and I can see why. So don't stop the video right now, okay? I understand. Everybody told you, you have to learn your intervals and you have to recognize them by ear and then don't worry about that right now because I'm not telling you to study the intervals or at least not immediately. You need to be able to transcribe, to, to, to understand what is going on in music. You don't necessarily need to be able to recognize all the intervals uh, on the spot. Eventually, this skill will come too, but it's not the first thing you need to learn. So what do I mean with ear training? You see, once I was talking with a painter, and this painter also happened to be um, an educator. He was also teaching people how to draw and how to paint. And he told me that all the exercise that artists, fine artists do, I mean, drawing circles and spheres and cylinders and then drawing the scheme of the face, the proportion of the body, have all this kind of exercise so that they learn how to put the image down on paper. But he told me that all those exercises were just, just excuses. They were just excuses so that the student will learn how to see, meaning to actually see what's in front of him or her, and so, once a student is able to see, they just need to take what's in front of them, take what's in front of them, and put it on paper. And seeing is the hard part, because everybody underestimates it. Everybody underestimates, for instance, that if I, I put a hand closer to you, the hand looks bigger. Of course you know it, but when you put it on paper, it's hard to do it. Now, I think that it's the same for songwriters. Music, it's an oral art. It's complete, it passes completely through our ears. If we could just really hear what is going on, our job as songwriters and composers and musicians in general would be much easier. But few people have this kind of skill. Okay, and um, because few people train it, nobody's born with it. Okay, so let's clean um, the slate from this misconception. People are not born with a great ear. Some people learn in a, in, 
how to listen in an easier way, as people don't, but everybody can learn and everybody can train their ears to hear better. And when I talk about ear training, I don't mean that you should listen to a song and you should see the chords appearing in front of you. Oh, that's a C. Oh, that's a G. Now, that's, that's a little part of ear training. What you need to train is listening in general. For instance, try to do this exercise. Just after, just after you've seen this video, grab a song, any song you like, and listen to it. And while you listen to it, try to understand what each and every instrument is doing in this song. So let's say you are listening to a pop song, just to make an example. Can you mentally isolate the drums or the percussions and hear what they are doing? Can you mentally isolate the bass and hear what the bass is doing? So listen to just the bass, the bass line. Can you tell me what are the other instruments in the song? Is there a piano in it? Is there a guitar? Is there more than one guitar? Are there synthesizers, or a string uh, section, or a brass section? There can be anything in the song, but can you identify all those instruments? Can you identify every single sound in your song? Once you can identify all those sounds, can you listen, say, to the bass line and transcribe it? I'm not saying you should transcribe the whole thing, but can you take two, three, four bars of the bass line and find what note the bass player is playing. Can you listen and tell me if the bass player is playing on the downbeat or on the upbeat? So, if that's a metronome, is the bass player playing here, 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 or is playing here, 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 here? The first is, are the downbeats and the second are the upbeats, and there are also 16 notes and, and, and another division of the beat, but that should be the basics. You see, that's rhythmical ear, and the one before was uh, timbrical ear, meaning uh, being able to recognize the tone of the instruments, what instrument it is. It's a trumpet, it, it's a flute, it's a guitar, or it's a synthesizer. A musician needs to be able to recognize all these, a songwriter even more. Sure, later you want to also be able to transcribe all those melodies without thinking too much. Because after all, you're, if you're a songwriter, you're going to at a certain point to have those ideas and you have all, all this music inside your mind. And it would be a great skill to be able to transcribe this melody and then find chord for it so that you have the song. So that's something you should train too. Um, because it's going to make your job much faster. I mean, can you imagine you have the inspiration but it, but it takes hours and hours for you to transcribe the melody and realize what notes are in there and what chords go in there it's going to be inconvenient and they're going to lose the inspiration eventually. So, being able to do this stuff as fast as possible is a great skill to have and a skill you should train. It's still ear training, now it's harmonic or melodic ear training. So, so you see, you can start training your ear without enrolling to the Royal Conservatory of Music and having those, the, the teacher there telling you, okay, this is a minor sixth, okay, this is a perfect fifth. That's a great way of learning harmonic and melodic oral skills, but those are not the only things you need to know. You need to know, and most people are more comfortable starting learning their oral skills by listening to music and starting recognizing what are the instruments, what are the rhythms, and, and listening to all those melodies. This is also going to give you a head start as a composer. You see, very few songwriters or composers write a single melody line in a song. Most often you have the main melody line, for instance what the singer can be singing, or the main instrument is singing on, on just in the foreground of the song, but then on the background of the song there are other instruments playing other melody lines. So for instance in a pop song you're going to have at least two voices, the singer and the bass player, and those two people are playing different melodic lines. If you st start listening to those two lines and are able, uh, you're able to isolate them, now it's easy to isolate the voice because it's really in your face, 
it's slightly harder to isolate the bass line, but if you can listen to the both, both of those lines at the same time and how they relate into e onto each other, you're going to understand better how music works eh? at a visceral level, at an intuitive level, without having to know much music theory. Now, if they want to study music theory, that's not a bad idea, okay? And it's going to help you too, but you can start with this kind of intuitive feeling. And after all, if you want to be a songwriter or a composer, it means that at the very least you enjoy listening to music, you're gonna see that the more you train your ear to listen accurately to what is going on in the music, the more you are gonna enjoy listening to music. Now, if I suggest you guys just start listening to the music you like and try to really listen to everything that's going on in there. Now, if you want to take a more hardcore approach, and this is an approach that, I, again, I suggest only if you want to take a hardcore approach. I suggest an exercise that uh, is due to a friend of mine called Antonio. Antonio gave me this exercise. Well, that he, that, 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 that he's, a, he's, a, um, he's not a musician, but he's a person who really enjoys to listen to music. And he came up with this idea of listening. Uh, he, he calls the exercise the buckification and consists in listening to music by Johann Sebastian Bach for three hours a day. Whoa, okay. But you can listen to it as a background music. So the idea is you just, you can find everything by Johann Sebastian Bach on YouTube. Just grab one of those videos that says like three hours of Bach music. Start it and lower the volume so that it just stays in the background. And then, and then go on about your day. Do whatever you need to do, okay? Study, work, whatever you want. Just keep these at a low volume in, in background for three hours a day. After a couple of weeks of these, you will listen to music in a different way. Why so? Because all music by Johann Sebastian Bach is highly polyphonic, meaning that there are more than one voice going on at the same time. And Bach was really good in making, in leading those voices in a, in a natural and understandable way. This is training your ear to recognize more than one voice at a time, even if you're not paying attention to it. Now, I suggested this exercise to some of my students and some of my friends, and everybody who tried it reported after a couple of weeks, they understand any kind of music much better and they really enjoy music more and they really they can they, they can listen to all the levels of the music but then again it could be a hardcore exercise for many of you so my suggestion is why don't you just start with the music you like and then once you start liking the process you can consider doing this buckification exercise either way the most important skill for a songwriter to develop is your ears. The most important skills to have is be, being able to listen to music, really listen to music. Understand all the little things in music. Understand all the voices, all the little melodies behind the music, understanding uh, the, all the um, embellishment that can be put on a note. A singer never sings a note flat. A singer, the sing singers typically put a bit of expression in the note me a bit of a vibrato or a slide in. You want to be able to listen to this and identify this. You want to understand all those things. You really want to listen and understand everything that is going on in music. This thing alone will make you a 10 times better composer and songwriter before you even go on the technical thing like music theory, technical, um, technical abilities of playing, uh, musical form, inspiration, techniques of songwriting. Just understand how to listen and you have most of it. So, after you've listened to this video, grab some music you like and start listening. And until next time, enjoy.